morning, Breakthrough. Good morning, everybody. Can we just stand to our feet as we get ready for worship? Um, it's been a great weekend of fire and glory. Um, we have had so much fun in God's presence this last week. And it feels to me like it's uh, a feast. Let me, let me read something appropriate for us. Um, John 7, 37 says, On that last and greatest day of the feast. Everybody say, this is a feast. Is a feast. Yeah. Jesus stood up in a loud voice and said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Who's thirsty this morning? He says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. And whoever who believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living waters will come from within them. Rivers of living waters. Say rivers of living waters. All right, so we're going to do a quick exercise right now from 150, Psalm 150. You guys ready? Yes. All right. It says, praise God in his sanctuary. That will be your cue. Now praise God with the guitar. Praise God with the drums. Praise God with the bass. Let every... Sing that has praise, praise the Lord. Come on, let's raise a mighty shout. Oh, you are the King Jesus.
pregando. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Your children, our Father is God. Your spirit, no limits is given to us. The kingdom advancing, we join in the song of the Lamb. You this together no time for depression or fears letting go he's given our courage it's time to take hold the kingdom advancing we join in the song of the land
pressing in. Oh, we pressing deeper. We opening wider. Oh, we open our hearts wider and wider. Oh, would you pour it out? God of revival. We fall afresh on us. creation we see Ooh. Oh, we lift our voice, lift our voices yeah. To join the song Some long before
sing highest praise, highest praises, Lord of all, highest praise. Lift your voice in worship, O oh Lord. Oh,
thousand generations you are worthy and now to you the slain and risen king we lift our voice with heaven singing worthy lord of
Lift a new song in the language of the Spirit.
Jesus, Lord, that you would come, revive your people again, pour out your spirit again afresh, even as you did on the day of Pentecost, that we would always be stepping into the newness of the move of God on the earth, bringing life, bringing light, bringing hope, restoration. Thank you, Lord. Cause us, your people, to live in perpetual Pentecost fresh wind of God blow through our lives even right now we open up our hearts we say come blow through come spirit of the living God come and breathe upon your people come and blow upon your people come and blow upon the church come and breathe life into this land Come and touch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say we're ready. We're ready for more. We're ready. We're ready for more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. chest say Holy Spirit make me ready now put your hand on the shoulder of somebody near you say Holy Spirit help them to get ready too we want to be ready we want to be ready we want more of you Hallelujah. 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 So good. Turn to somebody near you as you're about to take your seat and say, He's coming ready or not. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord is doing wonderful things in these days in our city, in our nation, and across the face of the earth. And the uh, reason I'm standing here for this brief moment is, is we don't want anything to get in the way of what the Lord is doing. Amen. <laughs> and uh, we have a wonderful city, Joyburg. If you're not from our city, we renamed it Joyburg from Joburg. <laughs> And, and our amazing city, as we prophetically declare on our, all of our logos for our city, that we'll be a world-class African city. And so we're needing to upgrade the infrastructure in our city. And so they've got a, a new road that's proposed to alleviate some traffic. But that new road cuts straight through our parking lot. And so if that road comes on the current path that it is designed to go on, it will have a major impact on our facilities, uh, our ability to expand and to grow and to host events like this, uh, to just do what Jesus is calling us to do. And so they've currently opened up uh, opportunity for, for people like us to comment on this new proposed road. And so we've prepared a bunch of comments. We've had lawyers just guide and lead us as well in, in wording everything. Uh, so we, we're not opposed to the road because we need infrastructure upgrades. But part of the plan is that on our, our property, on the parking lot um, side, there's a huge piece of our land that they want to take into, uh, turn into an, an attenuation pond. It's like a stormwater catchment area. And so we're just asking them, can they reconsider the placement of that? Can they reconsider the placement of the, the root of the road? Because as the scripture says, if, if we have faith just as small as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. So I'm saying well, if we can move mountains, surely we can move roads too. 
But we'd love for you to partner with us in just uh, praying that council does relook the, the path of this road and, uh, and that you, you put your support uh, not only in prayer but also by signing a little petition just to say that you back this, um, this comment that we're submitting on behalf of our church, uh, basically just stating what we do, what our heart is, what our intention is, uh, that we're here for the community, we're here to serve the community. The road impacting our property will impact our ability to serve uh, the community and especially that attenuation pond. And so can they relook the route uh, because there are other vacant land, uh, you know, near, uh, surrounding us, which the road could potentially uh, be diverted through instead of coming straight through our property. So we will love your support. And, uh, and if you're here, whether you're part of Breakthrough or if you're just visiting, uh, your support matters. And so we'd love for you to join us and just uh, uh, sign on the petition boards that we're putting, putting through. If you want to read the actual comment, we'll have it at the information counter for you after the service. You're most welcome to go and read so you know what it is exactly that you're, you're, you're backing and signing. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for praying with us. We'll submit the, the comments uh, Monday morning or I might even get to it this afternoon, uh, get it into the right desks. And we, yeah, we're praying and trusting God's going to move that road. Amen. Thank you guys for your support. Good morning. You picked a good day to be here. And when I say good, I mean really, really, really good. Painfully good. And if you are visiting today, I genuinely hope that this is a memorable experience. And we want to hear all about it. But not today. Next week. Our visitor center is closed today, so there's no good conversation and no good coffee, at least not for you today. But next week, please consider this your personal invitation. We'd love to have you back. We want to hear about everything you experienced today, next week as well. Youth, you are not going to youth because you do not want to miss out on what's going to happen here. So you are sitting, even if it has to be in the front. Little lambs, your mommies can take you off or your daddies can take you off to your class now. Let's have a look at the announcements. Enjoy. Good luck. Have tissues. <laughs> Good morning, Breakthrough family. What an amazing day to spend together. Here's some information we want you to know. Hey, parents. Our kids' ministry is enjoying a special Kids' Encounter Sunday. You would have noticed that drop-off took place in our Sapphire Auditorium. Please note that pickup of your kids will take place in their relevant classrooms. If you're currently engaged to be married or moving towards the significant next step, our next brew marriage course is happening in July. This is a great opportunity to invest in your future marriage from the get-go. Stay tuned to see how you can register for this course. Calling all worshippers! Our annual Breakthrough Worship School is happening from the 12th to the 16th of July. If you're a musician, vocalist, sound engineer, or part of media and production, this is for you. Register today and get ready for a powerful time as we worship the King. To register for any of these events, visit breakthroughlife.co.za forward slash events. We are delighted to announce our wonderful women's conference happening on the 9th of August. To every mother, daughter, sister, and friend, save the date and get ready for a time of impartation and leaning into God's heart for you, wonderful woman. More details to be announced in the coming weeks. Have you been thinking about joining one of our volunteer crews? We've got a space for everyone. It's amazing to see the body of Christ come together to love and serve. From sound, production, media and photography to kids, refreshments, hospitality and more. Sign up at breakthroughlife.co.za forward slash volunteer. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Breakthrough Life Church, to join the live stream on Sunday mornings, catch up on sermons or re-watch powerful messages from previous meetings. Enjoy the morning with us. I'm crashing down and I think a lot of 
the wall around my life or the challenge, the obstacle, I just want to raise a shout, let the wall come down and we can keep moving forward. And, and God is good and sometimes He does that. And we love it when that happens because he, he fights our battles with us and for us. Amen? But, but there's, a, there's a context. I think sometimes the Lord does come and bring a victory, but our challenge, our, our, you know, what we need to walk through in that victory, our real challenge lies on the other side. So we see this in, in, in the Israelites, and as they are having this victory, as the Jericho walls come down, they walk around seven times on the seventh day. It says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, it says, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. But then it says, the city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. See, I think we love the victory, but sometimes we don't necessarily love that the plunder actually belongs to the Lord. Maybe it's in business, maybe it's in your own uh, you know, financial journey, that maybe there's a, a wall that you need to come down and you shout and you say, Jesus made this wall come down and the Lord, He blesses us because He's a good Father. But Sometimes I think we, 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 we fall to the temptation, and that's exactly what happened here with the Israelites, um, because everything was supposed to be devoted to the Lord. But now they had gold, they had silver, they had special garments, and, and so some of the people, the Israelites, they were tempted because they saw these valuable things, and they thought, well, what if we just keep them? And so a guy named Achan did. He buried them in his tent, and uh, read in Joshua 7, verse Verse 13, go consecrate the people, tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, there are devoted things among you, Israel. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them. See, sometimes there's material things that we withhold from the Lord that belong to Him because we belong to Him because He paid us. He paid for us with the ultimate price. And when we withhold these material things, these things that are sometimes supposed to be devoted to the Lord, whether that be a tithe, whether it be an offering, whether it be obedience to the Lord when it comes to material things, uh, for the Israelites here, it says you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them, until you give back to the Lord what belongs to Him. So I want to encourage us this morning as we give, as we give tithes, as we give offerings, that we say, God, you, all of us belongs to you. And so we want to give everything uh, that you're leading us to give, that we will not hold anything back, that as we have victories in our lives, that when you say the, the, the plunder is yours, that we will give to you what belongs to you. Amen? We have a number of ways we can give you our breakthrough. So we've got our bank details, we've got SnapScan, we've got card payments at our information counter uh, downstairs, which you can do that after the service. Uh, we're also going to be passing uh, the bags, so we can do that as we stand, and we're going to say a declaration, because it's so powerful when we declare the truth because God is good. So can I invite you to declare with me? We declare that our God is our financial source. We declare that His resource is unlimited and not tied to this world's economy. We declare that the day of loss is over and that the day of increase has begun. We say enough to leanness, barrenness, and joblessness. We say enough to lost wages and decreased benefits, enough to business closures and bankruptcies. We declare that we are in agreement with God's enough and that our God is more than enough. Therefore, we declare jobs and more jobs, raises and bonuses, increased benefits, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, tax returns, gifts and surprises, found money, debts paid off, expenses decreasing, and blessings increasing. We say enough to limited supply and declare our allegiance to Him who is able to do abundantly above all we ask or think. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for your faithfulness. Go ahead, take a seat. All right. Everybody happy? Hungry? Excited? Anticipating that God's got something for us this morning? And He does. He does. So we've just uh, been enjoying the most wonderful weekend. And we just got this expectation, He saves the best for last. All right. So well done. You're in the right place at the right time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been uh, hugely blessed by the, the ministry of David Hogan. And, um, and I've just asked our good friend, Hank, who's been uh, doing mission work in the Trans Sky for a bunch of years. And it's through our connection with Hank that we're able to uh, host uh, Brother David. And uh, it's, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. And he, he causes our paths to be crossed with, with the right people at the right time. And so my sister, who is living in the Eastern Cape, got to know Hank. And through, through that connection, then we got connected. And so now we've got connected. And I just thought it would be really special for Hank to introduce Brother David to us this morning. So thank you, Hank. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. You guys doing good? Amen. Right, so I'm so grateful for this weekend. Thank you once again for your hospitality. Really appreciate it so much. And it's such an honor to introduce uh, Brother David to you. I hope I'm getting better at this. <laughs> we can talk afterwards, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, so our paths crossed about 13 years ago uh, with us and with my family. And uh, it's just been an amazing journey to, to learn from, from Brother David, from his whole family. Uh, just the way they conduct themselves in the Lord, the, the path that they've chosen, their faithfulness to the call of the Lord despite many obstacles and challenges, uh, the power of God that is present. And um, I've had the privilege to be in Mexico and to actually meet some of the people that we hear the stories about. And it's just, it's just mind-blowing, such an honor. And then on top of that, he's been married 51 years to the same wife, which is very impressive. And... Um, uh, They've been in the missions field almost 50 years. Uh, Corbin is his grandson, and his children is still in the missions field. So it's four generations that decides to choose to work in a place where literally everything wants to kill you. The bugs, everything is angry. The bees are angry. Everything is angry. But God has been protecting them, and it's just such an honor to learn from them. So welcome, sir, and thank you once again for blessing our nation. Holy <laughs> Ghost. Here we go. Yeah, thank y'all. Very nice. Thanks. Have a seat. Very nice of y'all. Thank y'all. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Here we go. That's good. Thank you. Every time. Thank you. Uh, I'll try to do better about drinking it. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Well, my wife, <clears throat> I tell you. 51 years, and she still takes care of me like, I don't know. It would make you mad if I told you. She really likes me. So, but here's the deal. Uh, fellas, I figured out how to not trick her. Corbin, figure this out. I think I like three wraps on her or something. Okay, so I, di I didn't trick her or uh, deceive her, but I I'm a flower person. My mother raised me to raise flowers. My daddy raised me to be a soldier and hunt. My mom raised, thank you. My mom raised me to know how to do flowers so I can do flowers. I, I don't know just about anywhere I can do plants. And so I grew to like them. I know, I know lots and lots of names. I know lots of stuff about them. Uh, it's just something I do. But whenever I met Ms. Hogan, and everybody wants her name, her name is Mrs. Hogan to you. <laughs> she has a different name for me. Uh, it just that uh, when we was out there on the field a while, y'all changed. And uh, everybody started becoming entitled and they started ordering my wife around and guys like me think that's a little bit too noisy. And so I started calling her Mrs. Hogan in public. And so that's what you get. So there you are. But I want to I wanna just say, guys, Women, for some strange reason, like to kill flowers so that they can look at them. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Uh, 
They do. Uh, so when I started dating my now wife, uh, I figured out that this was going the way she wanted it to, which was marriage. I could tell. And so my daddy gave me some advice. He said, if this is a keeper, spend the money on her. So I went and found these flowers. I started locating these, these odd roses from all over the United States. And it ended up that I got flowers from every state in the United States, and there's 50 of them. My mom-in-law now, or she's gone now, but she told me, uh, I'm so grateful that my daughter started dating you because my, my home always has fresh flowers. <clears throat> so, I don't know, on our wedding day, I ordered these flowers. She wanted white. She wanted a dozen long stem and a dozen of the other kind uh, arrangements. So, so I ordered these things, a special place in Georgia, in the United States, and they're the purest white. Boy, they were the most beautiful. And I look, listen, ladies, listen, you're going to like this. I told her I would marry her if she would, uh, uh, if we could get married, if she would get married in a mini skirt. <laughs> so she made her own. She's a seamstress, my wife is. And she made this, I never got to see it till she come around that thing. And when she, I couldn't even speak. <laughs> she had these long stem roses and she come, it was like, God, I made a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> So it was just wonderful. And to this day, I still get her flowers. Lots of them. Golly, she likes them. I don't know. I told her if I had all my money back, we'd be wealthy. <laughs> but she wants flowers. She said, that's a good thing. Say it, lady. Say it. That's a good thing. <laughs> yep, it is. Now, another thing about marriage, since we're on that seminar on it, you know, I, I'm, I am, uh, you can tell, I have this thing about working. I'm, uh, I'm one of those people that could have easily been a, had a lot of money, millions of dollars probably. Uh, I, I just got this deal about being, being serious about my work. Uh, and so uh, when God got me finally into Mexico uh, and I found, finally found where we're going to be working, I started working. Years start going by, one, two, three. And on, in year nine, <clears throat> I'm doing this 30-day, uh, this month fast. And I got this list of, uh, of, I need more villages. I need more power. I need more anointing. I need fresh oil. I need, I need all the, you know what we need to make things happen for what we're trying to do. And God interrupts me one day when I was talking I was praying, I, I, I was, I was serious, you know, uh, praying and reading my list and, you know, doing what you do. And he interrupted me and it startled me that he answered me because he don't much. He said to me, you're going to lose them. Well, who, what? Lose who? You're going to lose your family. Well, I was quite aggressive about my work ethics. And so uh, God says, you're going to lose them. I mean, it just came from out of, the, like out of the blue sky. Just like, I wasn't thinking, I don't think, I think about winning souls. I don't think about anything else much. <clears throat> and so uh, I said, what does that mean? I'm going to lose them. Your kids and your wife, you will lose them. I said, well, dude, you're the one that told me to come here and do this job. Y'all don't talk to God like that probably, but he's my friend. And so he puts up with my humanity. He's really nice, God is. Because <laughs> I seem to have a lot of humanity. So, uh, 
uh, said to him, look here, uh, what does that mean anyway? He said, this is what it means. You're going to start dating your kids and your wife. I said, date her? Why? Because she needs you. And I go, I mean, I love her. I mean, that's enough. Turns out you ladies are not that way. <laughs> You're so fragile and you need so much reassuring. <laughs> oh. So I decided to listen to God and I took on, now this is not going to mean a whole lot to you, but in my world it's, it's premier, all right? I said, look, I'm going to start dating them and I'll give them village priority, which that doesn't mean anything to you because all you're after is rands and dollars and euros. I'm not after that. That finds me by itself. The blessings of God, I don't seek them. They seek me because I am a son of God and the benefits of God daily are loaded to me. And you need to understand, you need to flip your prayer life a little. God loves you. That's going to happen. What you need to do is energy in what he says. All right. That's just good advice from a great grandpa that knows how to seek God and do this job. <laughs> okay. So, and keep a marriage and keep kids. Okay. So. So it turns out that my wife and I, uh, I started dating her. She's a, she's a primary target village for me. Uh, so I started giving her two days every three months. We, we'd go away and just, she could just have me. And that's what she wanted the whole time. And then my kids, I started giving them, uh, it started out in the beginning, it was a half a day each because they're little, right? Littler. And so I started dating them. I'm talking about taking them, letting them do whatever they want. Just, they got me for 12 hours. Let's go. Bring it. What do you want? And they just, it just, I don't know what it did, but it sure did. My kids, my grandkids, all of them, we, we get along pretty good. So I want you to, I want you to understand, men, get some flowers Date your wife and date your kids. All right. Everybody's always asked me how I kept my family involved, me being so aggressive and wild and all this danger zones and all this. If you're the right, if you're the right example, they all walk with you through hell and think it's a playground. Hear me? So that's all I'm asking you to do. In Jesus' name. And, and there's lots of reasons for it. <clears throat> so, Holy Ghost, Shatalabata, Torunda, Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. So, I got to figure out how I can hit you the hardest because I'm fixing to get on an airplane and I'll leave. <laughs> but how, I can, how can I affect you spiritually, emotionally, mentally? as much as possible to the seriousness, the gravity of what we're trying to do. Uh, uh, because there's so much awesomeness of God, <clears throat> but there's so much conflict and distraction as well. So I need you to give me a few minutes and uh, I'll see what I can do about stirring you up. Holy Ghost, my wife seems to think that's easy for me to do. I stir her up regularly. <laughs> and most of the time it is on purpose. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So, <clears throat> I got back from Mexico once to visit my family, my mom and dad, that part of my family. 
And my mom sets me down. She's up, my mom's 100 years old. That lady, all she does, all she does is sit with her Bible and read it and pray. That's what she does. And she's so happy. That's something, huh? All right. So I come back from work, Mexico, and visit them. And I got there. <clears throat> and my mom says to me, I need you to get your calendar. I need to ask you a few questions. She said, I've been interceding for you. And God came in here a few times, and I want to know what was going on because I know you were in your, your life was in danger, uh, and I want to know what. And uh, I said, okay. No, I'm just going to tell you about one. I was, I, I'm this guy. I'm the guy that will go out there and confront rebel groups, uh, witch doctors. Uh, I, when I hear about them, I, I, all of a sudden I feel like it's my responsibility because I heard about it. So it's my responsibility to go to those people and get them to repent. That's how I feel about life. All right? So my mom, I was out there doing this. There's a rebel group out there, a <clears throat> bunch of bad guys. And so I went out and they got after me. They were hunting me on horses. Uh, I'm, I'm on foot and they're on horses. They have automatics and I don't have anything but Jesus. So you know who won? You see me here, right? <laughs> so I'm out there, and man, they have these horses, and they're really, I like horses. I, I rode horses 30 years to, uh, to do my job. There were no roads. So I, <clears throat> that's what I did for 30 years. I was a cowboy. Man, I like that. Uh, I do. But the work got so big, and I can't do that now. All right. So... <clears throat> uh, I'm out there. They literally got the horses were, were spooked by, because I was in the bush, but they couldn't see me, but the horse could. And, and it, got, it got really close a few times and uh, there were a few shots fired and I was nervous, but I, I made it. And what was, uh, what was awesome to me was you got this grandma that God sits down on and says, if you want to see your son again, this is how you pray. Say it, I want that. I want that in my life. I want, I want to be, see, I want to be the guy out there in the bush and I need intercessors. Hello? I need me some intercessors. Holy Ghost. That's a good idea. And I told her all about it. She just wept and wept and wept. And uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, I just want to encourage you that God's got people, the Holy Ghost is interceding for you, Jesus is interceding for you, and there are intercessors in the body of Christ that are on your behalf seeking God. Amen. Say, I want that more. Say it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Now, now I'm going to tell you one more, and then I'm going to read some Bible, and then one more, and then we'll do something else. Uh, seriously, is that much time? Yeah. What the? <laughs> so the green one is right? Oh, this is easy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Holy Ghost. All right. So I, I really want to, like, like in the early service, I stretched y'all. Here we go again. You okay? No, but this is a different, couple of different subjects, but they're still stretching. You sure? Yeah. I'm not going to do witchcraft. I stayed away from that one. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of that, and you know, that we could talk about, but I don't want that this time. I'll see how much y'all can take me, and we might hit it if I get invited back one day. <laughs> and if I don't, then who cares? <laughs> so, <laughs> I apologize. That might have come off a little hard. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mom. I'm sorry. I keep you nervous. See, your face is red like my wife's gets. <laughs> yeah, it's no kidding. My wife, she'll be sitting there and I notice her. She just flushes red. And I, you know, and I look at her. What? Are you okay? 
And she just goes, yeah, David, everybody else in here is embarrassed. I just don't have that issue. Worrying about men is not my problem. Or women, sorry. Okay, so I want to tell you this. This, this is going to incite you a little bit, maybe. Uh, entice you, maybe. Uh, but there's been a few things happen that are not... Uh, I can't say as I have a whole lot of reference for them biblically. Uh, there, we, can, we can get similar stuff. Uh, so, okay, so I'm in Europe preaching uh, just below Stuttgart, uh, a town called Tübingen in, in Alemania, uh, Germany. <clears throat> All right. You know, I'm having a good time over there. I, I like those people. They, you know, I, I don't know. I like them. I guess if I could work somewhere, I should choose Germany, I guess. Have y'all noticed I like to preach everywhere I go? <laughs> As well, it should be. And so they really, I like their food too. Wow, man. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm preaching, right? Whackety, whackety, whack. Doing my job. Okay, then I leave. Uh, do you know uh, Maldonado? in uh, Miami. So I'm there, right, uh, with Brother Maldonado. He's, he's got about 20,000 people in his church. So I'm there. I'm one of the people, you know, and, I'm, and, and there's this big conference, and there is just everybody there, right? All right. So I told my team, I said to them, I said, look, I, I, I refuse to let you even eat one grape that they offer you. Stuff, some of this stuff's out of order, and so we're not going to participate, but we are going to try to get some people saved and help. They go, fine, whatever. Uh, so we go in this room where you got all these people that are really famous, uh, and this food, man, that layout, I don't know, maybe 40 or so thousand U.S. dollars maybe. I mean, there was some really specialty items in there. And I'm over, I'm standing up. He know, he'll tell you, I don't sit down. Uh, I'm, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I'm not going to sit down. So, so here I am, you know, standing over there, found me a little corner, and I'm just observing him, you know, just looking at him. And here comes this guy. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> oh, it's just annoying. There's this guy, he's got on the suit and all the stuff he does. And who cares? You know, that's who he is. And he comes rolling up on me and he goes, thank you, Brother David, for coming to my church. And I'm looking at him. I said, now, I know who you are, but I have not been to your church. It's, uh, it's the largest church in Central America in Guatemala. In Guatemala City. And so I go, now look, I know you, you and I, evidently you know me, but I have not been to your church. He said, really? Took his smartphone out, hit the button and said, what is that and who is that? <laughs> and there I am. <laughs> sitting on his platform playing a guitar, and I don't even play. Yep. <laughs> Told you. And so I go, okay, so uh, how'd it go? <laughs> he said, uh, that's the best services we've ever had. He said, so many people got saved and healed, and, and that song you introduced, I said, can I get a copy of it? <laughs> Weird. It sounds weird, don't it? And so I'm trying to go along with him now so I can, so I can get some more information. And he goes, okay. He said, yeah, I can get you a song. He said, but don't you have your own copy? I said, you know, just let me have one of yours. And he said, uh, people are still getting saved. Every time we play that song, people run and get saved. I said, wow, that's nice. I said, I need the date. Give me the date. 
So he texted me the date, and I said, all right. So then I left all that and went back to work in Mexico. I get to one of our villages. And uh, here we go. And I go rolling up in this village, and the brothers are all there, and everybody's happy, and there's some, lots of them and all that. And, you know, they're, they're, they're normally not that emotional. They're, they're just not, not in public. And so, uh, you know, I'm going, I got the pastor, I go, what is going on? Well, we're grateful. I said, I see that you're grateful. What are you grateful for? Well, you came here. I said, really? What happened when I came? He said, you come driving in a, uh, what do y'all call 18-wheeler, lorries or truck, tractor trailer. He said, you came driving up in a big tractor trailer uh, truck with material. And I go, yeah, I can drive a tractor trailer, but I didn't come here. <laughs> and they go get the invoice. And my signature, it's my signature, it's on there. And the whole tractor trailer was rebar, block, cement, things for building, for construction. I said, Brother Dave, we're so grateful and we're, we're very appreciative and we want to say thank you. I said, okay, let me, can I have a copy of that invoice? I need to know the date. So I took all these dates and put them together it was the day that I was in Tübingen, Germany. I was also in Guatemala and Mexico. All right. Now, and I know there's quite a few of you that, that really want to stand up and say, I don't believe that. And, you know, and I'll, if, if it wouldn't have happened the way it did to me, I'd have stood up with you. But it's pretty, it's, it's just, it's just your God, you, you serve a God of power. He's not short. It's not running out. You're not having to, to share with somebody else. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, all right. Then I got invited to the Pacific ocean, right? To the islands. And, and uh, <clears throat> so I went, I went down to New Zealand. Then from New Zealand, we flew up to the Solomons. Uh, then we went to uh, uh, Vanuatu and then to Fiji. We was just hitting all these ma the island groups out in the uh, Pacific. And then we're just preaching the house of fire, you know, and it's just people getting saved, miracles. Yahoo. Okay. It was awesome. And I was getting to dive in the top 10 dive spots in the world. <laughs> and I was very grateful for that. Thank you, God. It was awesome. I'm going to do it again, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And so, <laughs> you have to ask God for that, buddy. It's just too hard to figure that stuff out. Uh, okay. So, now I'm at this five-star, five-diamond resort you know, and I'm coming in from church one night and there's this big, uh, big, uh, what, do they, what do they call it in Hawaii? The luau, luau. There's this big luau going on. And I'm, you know, and I'm looking, I want to be part, because I want me some of that pig meat so bad. I'm hungry, right? And, and all of a sudden, here they come you know, the, the hula girls and men and, and they're coming up with all these lays and, and, and I'm starting to back away because they're surrounding me, us. And I, I got, finally I hit the door and they come and they start piling lays on me. And I go, I've been here for three days. This is supposed to happen when you get there. And then this lady comes, this businesswoman. Here she come walking up. She said, I am the chairman of the Hilton Group for all of the Pacific Islands in the South. 
I said, yes, ma'am, very, very nice room. Think I'm very, but this is a little much. She goes, well, Brother David, I want to I wanna say thank you for choosing us a second time. You know, and I go, wait a minute. This is my first time. <laughs> and everybody, just like you did. She said, come with me. And I went with her. She gets this book out of registry. And there's my name in the book three years ago. And I was there for three days preaching Jesus. And this David wasn't there. Did you hear me? So I want to upgrade, okay? I want to upgrade you, you who are seeking God, you who are trying to, to, to do something for God and you're, you're availing yourself, you, you're giving yourself over to his, his will, his goodness, his ways. Uh, 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 we all know that he can do whatever he wants to. And him choosing to use us, like now that's happened two more times, I'm not going to take the time to tell you, but, it, but it's like four or five times now that I have discovered this. And, and I'm very grateful. I want to I wanna offload some stretching on you. I want you to expand who you think God is. I want you to understand he will and can use you if you will let him. Okay. Okie doke. With me or not? Okay. So, so I wanted to share that with you uh, and, and scare some of you and all that. Because who knows if this is the real me or not? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, and, and it's all lots of fun, funny and all that, but listen to me. God is really bizarre. I've been telling you, he, want, he wants this thing done and he uses the people that let him. I need you to open your heart to his greatness, to his abilities. Let, let, him, let, let yourself be used, be, be usable. I need you to enlist in this goodness I'm talking about. Please. Okay. So then let's go over here to John. Uh, uh, please, John. Oh, this is going to be easy. We're going to get a little prayer in. Holy Ghost. John chapter, I think it's 10. Let me look again. Nope, it's 11. John 11. Are y'all there finally? Prophets, had you known, you would have sent everybody a text, and then there you go. But you didn't. <laughs> Holy Ghost. I just have to. I just have. I feel obligated. John chapter 11. Uh, and if, if, you, if you're versed in this, you know this is where Lazarus died and Jesus' is friend. And y'all heard my version of that this morning, and I wasn't as successful as Jesus is. But I wasn't 33%. Okay, so verse, uh, we'll, go, we'll jump down all the way to verse 21. I want to go through, I want to just take my time with this just for a minute. It said, Martha then said to Jesus, if you'd been here, see, that's how we live is in regret. Say, I'm getting out. Yeah. I'm not going to live in regret. I'm going to live in the moment and trust God for right now. And what happens, I'm going to be in full agreement with the trust in God that, it, that I don't owe anything behind me. Okay? I don't owe it. I don't. I don't have to put time on it. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, what I have to do is the now and my future. I can change both of them. By trusting God. The back, 
I can't do much with. But the now and the tomorrow, I almost went Spanish again on you. Manana. <laughs> tomorrow, I can fix that. Hear me? And I can do it with faith and meekness and long suffering and humility. I can fix this. Holy Ghost. Martha said, boy, if you'd have been here, and we all believe that, how many thousands of things in your life, your personal life, boy, if, if I would have just known Jesus more, if, I, if he would have just come, I, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, I don't. And there's thousands of things in my life that suitable for that statement. I refuse to dwell in it. I choose to dwell in Jesus is king and he's got my life. And it says right here, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. That is a true statement. I was in a village uh, and uh, this dad come up to me, said, I left my son sick. I need you to come right now and lay your hands on him and he won't die. I said, no, we're going to do the word of God first and then our needs second. The most valuable thing we could ever do is the word of God. That's how I believe and I've stuck to it and it worked out. All right. So, so we did service. Uh, uh, I'm not going to explain none of that background stuff, but, but we get, we went with, I went with him after service, like six hours went by. And when we, got, we got up close to this, uh, is this grass roof with the bamboo walls and the grass, the grass goes down to here and you have to bend way down to go in. And so he goes in cause there's a woman in there screaming, right? And so he goes in, comes out. And then he invites me in and he says, here's what he said to me. My son is dead. Now you have to do something about it. All right. Now in their culture, you, you are, if you can, if you can make something, fix something before it breaks and you don't, and it breaks, you're responsible. All right. And he knew that it, the odds are really high. Had I gone and touched his son, he wouldn't have died, but the boy died. And by the time we got to him, it was like six hours or so. Okay. And so I go in there and then when I, when I straightened up in that uh, room, there's three spiritist healers there and three black magic warlocks. And as soon as they saw me, man, they went into cursing, curse, curse. I mean, some serious cursing. And I'm looking at them, you know. And I look over here and there's mom over there holding her little nine-year-old boy. He's dead. She's freaked out. Dad is serious now. He considers it my fault. And the way they believe it is. I don't believe that, of course. Uh, but they do. And that's what the value is where I'm standing. Okay? Hear me? All right. And so me and the witch doctors had a few words. And I told them how awful they were and how much Jesus is going to whoop, whoop them up good. <laughs> but I said it in different words than that. <laughs> and so uh, then I turned to them. Look, when I touched that little old boy, mama moved. <clears throat> and he's stiff and he lost the color of his skin. He's got the sticky stuff on him and all that. And so... I start praying for him. Nothing happened. I went in English. Nothing happened. Spanish, nothing happened. Indian, nothing happened. Tongues, nothing happened. <sighs> it's so hot. I'm sweating all over this kid. You know, it's just so hot. And so I got a hold of him. I, and I just sighed. I said, God, please. And I looked back down at the kid, and I mean, right in front of my eyes, his little T-shirt bounced. It went, doom. And I saw it. I saw it. 
And I raise up like this, and the dad's standing there. He saw it. So both of us are going, what? <laughs> and I got a hold of his uh, arm over here, and I felt the first pulse. Doo -doo -doo, and it stopped again. And Jesus, 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 and doo -doo -doo. And then it took, I don't know, four or five minutes, and it finally got normal. It went, doo -doo -doo, and stopped. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and it stopped. And then finally, doo -doo. And, I, and he, he got limber again and warmed up. His color came back and then his eyes popped open and he was healed. Yeah. So, so I know, I know, I know my brother would not have died. I, I got that. I do. Okay. All right. And it says, even now, now look, look at this girl believes. Say, I believe. Say it. I believe. Come on, say it. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Even now, I know, say, I know, I know. that whatever you ask, God will grant it to you. And Jesus said to her, your brother's going to rise. Okay, now. Of course, we're all, all of us don't think like Jesus. <clears throat> we're thinking at the while sometime, you know, however, how many million years from now he comes back, uh, that's going to happen. But I need you to hear what Jesus' response to that was. Look, look what it says. Martha said, yeah, I know he's going to arise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, what I've got to get over to you is what Jesus said. Because we all believe that last day deal. I can pretty much tell you that's what you believe. And, and that's where your hope is, is in that day. Well, there's another day called today. Amen. And it's not the last day. It's the now day. And Jesus is not dead. He is alive. Okay. It, it, and uh, she, Jesus said, this is, y'all, this is to me a most profound and awesome. It runs my life. This next phrase runs my life. Jesus said, I am myself the resurrection and the life. Now, whatever your need is today, Whether it's money, whether it's health, whether it's family, whether it's children, whether it's job, it, I, I don't care what it is, gasoline, I don't care what it is. I care that you understand that Jesus is the life for that item. The whole wide world, well, how do you get this energy? How do you generate this stuff? I, I'll go back over it one more time with you. <laughs> I just got through telling you, and now you ask me that question. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I myself am the resurrection and the life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that it's for right now that you are in the now. Holy Ghost. Now look at this next phrase. I don't know how it says it in your version. Mine says, whoever believes in. Say, I do. I believe in. Jesus the righteous. As the son of God. The resurrected king. I believe him. Say it. So it says right here. Although he may die, yet he shall live. Say, I will live. Say it. And I will live forever. In the name of Jesus. All right. Now, there's only, there's only one other person. Do you know Dave Bryan? California, Yuba City. Uh, he's the one who took down Antan Lavo, the, the, witch, the, the head Satanist in the United States. He's the guy that fought him and the guy died. So, so his wife is the granddaughter to A.A. Allen. 
She is my friend. That lady, we know how to together seek God. And we are not ashamed nor afraid. And, and she believes like I believe what this says. I believe Jesus is talking to us on a, on a literal, you can live forever. Now, I don't know what that means because Jesus said, if you die, you'll still let me, you're going to live. But he goes on in the next verse. Look what he says. Whoever continues, say, I continue. In, in Jesus, say it. Whoever continues to live and believe, say, I continue to live. I continue to believe in Jesus. All right. Shall never die at all. Now, you see, all of you going to quote me that one verse in Hebrews, it's appointed to man once to die. I agree with you. It says that for you. Holy Ghost, I need you to let the resurrection life come in you. I, I need you to let it take seed and take hold and, 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 and begin to take over your life. Amen. Amen. I need that from you. I need your distractions to grow less and less and, and his resurrection and life to grow more and more in you. Because it takes time it does for us to get away from, because we're born in sin and then we get reborn, but that, the, the, the sin character nature guy don't want to let you go. So it's a fight. And so it needs to be pushed out with resurrection in life Amen. so you can live. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a reason why I personally am healthy in 71 years old and I'm not sick, not on meds. I'm telling you there's a reason. I believe this. Yeah. Hey. Come on. And I'm not a good person. God is. <laughs> Jesus in me is awesome. Yeah. I would never tell you I was a good guy, but I will always tell you how awesome Jesus is. I need you to capture, it doesn't matter how small the seed is, you capture of this. That's not relevant. It's that you capture it and you nurture it and you feed on it. I need that for you because you seem to have an idea of going forward in the fire and the goodness of God. I, but it's going to take life and resurrection for you to be successful. All right. And it says right here, it says, me shall never die at all. Do you believe this? And look what she says. Of course I do. Just like if, if I would pick any one of you, you would go, I believe that. But your life does not show it. It shows the world. Our testimony has to be the life and resurrection. I need to convert you. I, I'm converted. I believe you're saved. But I need to convert your spirit man to the life and resurrection I'm talking about. Because it will change who you are. It will. Everybody wants all this stuff that, we, that I personally can do. And, and, and yet they still want the same lifestyle they had before it all started. That is not going to work. Amen. And I'm not put out with you one bit. I'm, try, I'm actually trying to help. But you don't understand. And don't tell me. I don't want to know your horror story. I've heard so many thousands of those things. Goodness, that's just enough. Thanks. Let's just talk about how awesome Jesus is, Okay. <laughs> But I do want you out of it. I do want you delivered from it. I do want you helped. I want to be helped more. And I will, I'm going to be. I'm pursuing it. There's a goal in front of me to wake up in the morning and, be, and look in the mirror and look like God. Psalm 17, last verse. 
That's, that, that is my goal in life. And I'm not there. But I still am pursuing it. And I want to enlist you, invite you to it. Because this girl believed, she believed, she, it, Jesus knew she believed. But he was trying to get her to see a different life. Then a one time believe in Jesus is king. It needs to be habitual. It needs to be a lifestyle. It needs to be just, you need to drive everyone around you insane like I do. Because I, I won't bend off of it. Because there's so much good for other people. And what you're getting is not, it's residual. It's not the same as what I get. I need you to, I need you to get the life. It's real. And I seem insane. I know it. I'm not. I'm not. That's enough of that. Okay, so you can't have it. Oh, Corbin's not here. Good. So he can't have it yet. Don't let him have it when he comes back. Oh, forgot to drink my tea again. Hey, tell her I drank some, all right? <laughs> Holy Ghost. Oh, it's good too. Thanks. Um, look, spend a few minutes here because I want to pray. Spend an extra, a little bit extra time praying. But I'm gonna, I want to tell you this story. And of course it has to do with Miss Hogan. I'll see her tomorrow night. Be flying all night, all day tomorrow. Okay. So. See, I'm a zealot. See, I'm a zealot. No, not you, me. <laughs> you need to be, but most people are not. Most people are okay being calm. They have their little biscuit and their little tea or their little coffee and talking fashion and golfing and things like that, you know, flowers. I did that. I already did all I'm going to do about that. Okay, so look, I'm not against any of those things. I'm not. It just, I'm not going to talk to you about it. Why? What a waste of time. Uh, so, look. <clears throat> but because I am so aggressive uh, after pleasing God and, and trying to heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead and cast out devils, you act, I actually get into some scenarios that are complicated. Because I get in over my head. And, and anybody that thinks they know how to do any one of those things I just named, you are fixing to crash and burn. Because these spirits we're dealing with, these bad guys, they've been manipulating humans ever how long the fall of man, ever what y'all teach the fall of man to be, ever, ever what that is until now, those bad guys have been lying to humans. And they know how to set you up and control you because there's only so many of us, our type of humans, you know, there's only so many of us. And so they got us coordinated, buddy. So you need help. And it comes from the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. So, so we're talking about me this second. So I'm ah, going for it. Sword in hand, shield. Ah. Okay, I'm doing my job. <laughs> okay, well, doing that, all of a sudden, and they, they figure you out. And they set up these skirmishes to draw you in. And it's because they have a plan and a trap for you. And we're easily trapped. I'm a hunter. And every time one of these traps close on me, I go, doggone, that was a good trap. I didn't even see it. So I go out in this village. There's no converts out there. 
And, and this one guy, he's trying to get saved. And he says to me, my sister-in-law is dying. I said, all right, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know what to do, so I need you to do it. All right, we'll go see. I may not have experience either. Let's go see. So we go, and you know, it's a really good long walk, two hours. We're talking, a bunch of us, we're just talking, talking this, all these questions about Jesus. And a little bit, I know I'm, I'm expressing it to him. All right, so now look, I get in there. And it's an older style, uh, well, comes, comes from some wars uh, that they had. So this, this guy says, my sister-in-law's in here. So I go in there. Okay. So her head is around back on her back. And her arms are twisted backwards and curled up in her legs. And she's laying there naked. And so I'm just looking at her. I said, what do y'all want done? Well, the witch doctors can't heal her. I said, so which one of y'all is a witch doctor? And the guy spoke up. I said, all right. I said, how many times did you try to heal her? He told me. I said, all right. What did you try? He told me, I said, my. He said, we need you to heal her. I said, yeah, we do. Now, I don't know what you know. Uh, now, because I was over there, I was in uh, Harvard. Teach, that, imagine me go to Harvard. But I, 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 was, I was in this uh, thing. It's like these 600 doctorates are in there. And they're asking me questions. I, you know, and I, I know that they were studying me. I know they were. And this one doctor, I told him this story, and this one doctor just spoke up. That's a cute spindle in the jadis, Mr. Hogan. I said, well, whatever that is. And he told, you know, because that stuff's deadly. All right. And so I sit there, <clears throat> took my Bible out, read a couple of things, Look, when you're looking at something like that, do you understand your, your faith is in the cellar? It needs to be on the housetop, but it's down yonder in the bottom. Because nobody, none of us have experience with seeing that healed. You, know, you ain't never even heard of anybody that would attempt to tell you they got something like that healed. I don't know what you teach in class, but it ain't how to get acute final meningitis healed. I know that. It needs to be. Guys like me need to know how. Because what if I actually do what you say and go? I'm going to need to know how, son. Chop, chop. Okay. <laughs> He's being very nice to me and hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Taking a chance. Uh, that's me, though. I'm a chance-taking fella. I imagine I'll be all right. So, y'all, this lady is in a bite. It was when she, she gave birth and, and then something happened and she... Okay, so, so what's the right prayer? Which one of your theologians want to pipe up on this one? Huh? Well, brother, praise the Lord. Oh. Holy Ghost. Tarabashat. <laughs> Holy, I am making fun of me and the witch doctor are talking now. And we're just talking. He goes, okay, look, how long is this going to take? I said, well, I don't have any experience. He says, what? You've never seen this say uh, healed? I said, nope. I said, have you? 
He said, no. I said, well. <laughs> so we're, we're both in the same exact boat. We just believe different gods is all. But one of us is going to get out of the boat. I'll be walking on the water. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. This is so much fun to me. Uh, y'all are very, very good hosts. Thank you. All right. So it's easy to preach. That's what I'm saying. All right. So for me. <laughs> okay. So it was a long time. I mean, we're getting into our second hour of this waiting thing. Everybody has had enough and gone to the toilet like twice. I mean, this is enough. And all of a sudden, it happened. You you should have heard that first bone snap. She's laying there, right? Same old painful person. And it goes, And I look at the witch doctor. I say, you heard that? He said, I heard that. It's okay. And then, so both of us, we're stepping back. <laughs> and then she starts snapping, popping. It was just like one of the scary movies. I'm serious. And then she comes all the way back to us. And she's just sitting there looking around at us. And her first question is, who let the white guy in? <laughs> And then they brought a blanket and took her, put some clothes on her, on and on and on goes the goodness. And she's healed. Yeah. All right. And I'm so excited, right? As, as, as well, you would have been as well. And so, man, I couldn't, I was on my motorcycle, man, wah, 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 getting home. I got home. Yahoo. I, I, ladies, I apologize to all of y'all about what I'm fixing to say, but my motorcycle lives inside in the living room. So I just hit the, I, I hit the front door and the thing blew open and I'm Wah! all the kids wake up. Miss Hogan comes in there. Couldn't you have been a little more noisy? She said. I said, I'll work on it, mom. You know, you got the adrenaline from the ride and you got mud and you got, oh, ladies, oh, I know. I know, I get that look all the time. They bought me a Harley. You know where it lives, right? Inside. <laughs> yes, sir, I got me a trike. A 103, 2016. There you go, now you know. Holy Ghost. I wouldn't put up with that. I know, I ain't marrying you. <laughs> we got that sorted, don't we? <laughs> so I bless you, it's fun, thank y'all, it's a whole lot of fun. Okay, I get home and man, my wife's got this thing going. She, she made me, y'all call it a bride. It's a boy, oh boy, I was like, and I said, dude, you gotta, you won't believe what I got into. And so I tell her, poo. And she's just worshiping God and around, all flying all around that kitchen doing her stuff. Okay. And so then we, you know, we go to bed and everything. And about 2.30 in the morning, all of a sudden, there's a cat clawing my back. Man, I jump up and turn the light on. It's my wife. <laughs> and I go, what's wrong with you? Dude, I got to sleep. I got to go to work in the morning. You men, you ain't said that about 6,000 times in your marriage so far. Get ready, 51 years, you, it'll be about 12,000 times. But now listen, this is the problem. Here we go. I didn't know about all these spirits and um, territory and all this stuff, right? I'm just zealot out there. Ah, I told you that in the beginning. 
But them things are mad at you. They way more mad at any one of you women in here at me right now. Those things hate you. And what they're going to approach is your most vulnerable spot. And on me, I love my wife. She's very dear to me. I think by the time I got up, got her, she looked in less than an hour like the lady out in the village. Okay. That's illegal trespass. Say it with me. That's illegal trespass. All right. Man, that woman's in some pain. And she's begging me. And I'm praying, praying, praying. I'm going for it. But it ain't working for her. All right. <clears throat> By daylight, I'm, I, I had to fight to keep the kids. Boy, she was, she was hurt. My wife was hurt. But see, that lady's already had 13 incurables. And the key word is she's been healed out of all of them. But this one right here was a little tight. I suppose, I guess they all are. But this, this thing here, God hurt her. And I'm not all right with that. You better bring some help. You come to my house. I like that lady. And so, man, I laid on the floor. I don't know how many hours. She's just moaning and begging me for help. And then it got to the evening time, and I, and I got up. I started suiting up. I, I got to go to work. How many of you know you got to go to work? Say, yes, I know. Yes. And, and because I'm a preacher, you think I can do and set my schedule and get out of what I want to get out of and into what I want to. That's not true. I work for God, not your opinion. And I have these ethics, and I got to hold to them. And I got to be honorable to him more than you. Ready? More than my wife. And now I lost all of you. Because I don't believe like you do. That's why I can get stuff done. Because God backs me. All right. And I know you want to debate me. Please don't. Humor me just for a little while. And I know it's a good debate. I know it's ongoing and I know it's running. I understand all of it. I know all the sides. I've chosen my trail. I'm going to live with it. And so, okay, so <clears throat> my wife, I went around. I don't, know, I don't remember what I did, but it was there where she could see me because she couldn't see me because the way she was, she couldn't see me. And then she saw me and she's screaming, because she was loony, y'all. She, she wasn't right. That stuff hurt her. If you go, I'm going to die. And that's a true statement. And I told you in the first service, I said, my reward for doing right is sometimes not the way we want to be rewarded. We have a different idea of how God's going to reward us. But sometimes there's things you must go through to receive the character of God and his power. And that's for me and my family. And you have to go through it. There ain't no, there ain't no way out of it. There ain't nobody can bail you out. There ain't nobody you can call that can fix it except Jesus. Okay, so that goes for everyone. <laughs> I'm picking on him, but that goes for everyone. <laughs> and uh, there was one of the secretary, this lady in there, she, I went out there and I told her, I said, this is what you're going to do with the kids. <laughs> Don't deviate. This is what you're going to do to my wife. <laughs> And you will not deviate. And answer all, all I ever want to hear. You can ask them. All I want to hear out of you is yes, sir. I don't want to hear any justification or yeah, a bunch of what else. Keep it. Jesus is king. You understand? 
I'm fighting for my wife's life. There ain't nowhere to go with her. Except bring her to the feet of Jesus. And so I did. So I went to church. I was crying the whole way, almost wrecked. I don't know how many times. I'm on my motorcycle. Man, that thing can't go hard enough, man. It's a 600 XR Honda, guys. Anybody knows. And I got her snorting, boy. I got it souped up. I got pipes. I got all this stuff. So it'll climb straight up that wall right there. <laughs> With me on it. And so... I got out there and they go, you know, what's up with you? You're tense. I said, yeah, I'm tense. My wife's home dying. Yeah. Well, go home. I said, Look, that's what, the, that's what hell told me. That's what she said. So all of y'all are wrong. We're going to do this. And so, <clears throat> God was crying. I, I just, I love that lady. I, and, and I don't know if that's legal or not even to love her that much. God's jealous now. So it's complicated. <sighs> so I got up and I preached the hardest, probably the hardest healing message I've ever preached, probably. And I told him, you won't be sick. I said no. And got him. <laughs> And we had church, and then where, where I'm from, in the United States, uh, my, my in-laws and them will get a little testy about it. They might even shoot me over it. You don't do that. You don't, you don't abandon. You don't neglect where I'm from. Hear me or not? And all I've done since I've been here is lifted my wife up and told you how much I love her. So that's not it. But there is one greater than her. And that is not a challenge. Boy, I just said a mouthful there, buddy. Yeah, you're going to have to answer a few questions. (laughs) I'm going to be gone. (laughs) Yeah, so look. It's hard. It's a hard thing to manage. It's a hard line to figure out. And you younger people, your marriages depend on it. But you're no use to them if you can't heal them. I mean it. You need to bow to the mercy. Man, I was so, I was afraid that hell was telling me the whole way home. I killed her. And then he would say, and your daddy-in-law's coming. And that's all, that's all that sounded right. Man, I drove through that front door. Bam! I never checked up. I threw that motorcycle on the, on the tile floor. And I went walking in there, mud dripping everywhere. Kicked that door. That, that, uh, <laughs> that bedroom open. And my wife's sitting there completely healed. And this is the first words out of her mouth. Thank you for listening to Jesus and not me. If you'd have stayed, I probably would have died. I said, I don't know that. I'm just grateful that you're healed and I'm happy. And the service really wasn't that special. It was because I obeyed, right? But there was no spectacular events go, went on. There, there was just faithfulness, diligence, honoring God, honoring the call, discipline, obedience to the resurrection and the life. And the resurrection and the life responded on my behalf and healed my wife. Amen. Amen. And I want that for you. I want that for you and I want that for you right now. Can we do something? Yeah. All right, sir. Let's do something. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I am very grateful. I'm, uh, what I am is, is 
I like your hospitality. I like your graciousness. I like your enthusiasm, your hunger. Uh, you need more. You want more. Get more. Amen. It's available. The, these powers, I don't have them hemmed up. They are available for every born again believer. Amen. Your calling is not relevant. Your, what's relevant is your hunger and thirst for righteousness and pressing in to the mark of the high calling of the gospel. Shalataba. And I bless you and I speak that over you. And I, uh, my wife, y'all don't know her. Hopefully you'll get to. But she's quite a serious lady. You think I am? You wait. As soon as I arrive, she'll go right down the, the list of the places he, he had us go. And all, it, she only has one question. She knows there's going to be healing and deliverance and health and miracles and new, the glory of God and fire. She knows that's happening. Her only question, one question, how do they take care of you? You get a green check mark. <laughs> I'm going to tell her. And you know what she'll say? Good, you can go back if they invite you. Okay. <laughs> and I lean on her for that. It matters to her. It matters to us both. But I'm a bushman. I can do, you can't make it hard enough for me, but it matters to her. Say, that's awesome. Say it. See, this is a good thing we got going. And I want that for you. I, I want you to have it. I do. It's important if I can spread it, if I can transmit it. In the name of Jesus, healing and health for you. Fire and life in the gospel and the power of Jesus. <clears throat> Dun, 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 Thank you, Lord. You're calling us out of nappies. You're calling us out of kindergarten to grow up. We say yes to getting on the path. We say yes to being stretched. We say yes to going on with you. Find us faithful. 
would you work your faithfulness in us. Cause us to be found faithful. Thank you, Lord. We receive. We receive. Thank you, Lord. Can we just hold hands? Spirit, would you seal these words, words of life, resurrection life, would you seal these words inside of our hearts and our minds? Would you cause the seed of this message to take root in our hearts? Would you cause it, Lord, to be established? Cause your life to flow in us and through us. Even as we step into new things in you, it's a new day, it's a new season. We knew that you had singled out, marked out this weekend a marker of something new, stepping into a new season. Holy Spirit, mark us. Seal us in you. Seal this word. It would not get snatched away. Cause it, Lord to create harvest in our lives and in this nation. For your name's sake. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Can we just appreciate... <laughs> So here's what I sense the Lord was doing in this time is that because you're in the environment, the healing that you needed was activated, was released. You hold on to the Lord and in the next few hours and couple of days, you're going to see things completely turned around. Absolutely believe that. There was a transfer and a transmission of faith that you latch onto and you couple that onto the onto Jesus for your miracle, for your healing, for your freedom. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank Jesus for what he's doing? Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let's lift a shout of praise to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yay, yay, yay. Yay. We say yay, amen. Yay, amen. Yay, amen. Bless you. Give at least three people a hug. Tell them Jesus is awesome. Go with Jesus.
covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may 